Okay, here we are at the beginning of game turn two. It's Confederates movement combat uh, phase. Um, they get reinforcements this turn. We'll have Heath's division, and then we'll have the Pegram artillery batteries. So, Heath will enter the board using the road movement of one half, one, and he will, s well, actually one, two for entering the zone of control of Gamble. And Pegram will enter with basically one because he's considered to be on the road and everybody comes in on a column type formation. And he will do two, three to join with Heath up on the hill. Let's see, the Confederates have no more um, reinforcements, so we'll pretty much just move on into combat. So, the Confederates are attacking Gamble, which this is a ridge hex. Um, it's verified in the main or the Gettysburg Battle Manual. Okay, so we have five, and Pegram is six, seven. So the Confederate, which I guess we'll use the red die, will have a plus seven, and the Union has a one, and for the hill, he will get another plus, plus two. So, we'll roll the die, Confederates will add seven, they're the red die, and the Union will add two. Well, let's see what happens here. Confederate seven plus one equals eight, and um, the Union is seven plus two equals nine. So, it looks like the Defender wins. If the Defender's combat number equals or exceeds the attacker's combat number, the defending side wins the combat and all attacking units in that individual combat must be retreated. Looks like the Confederates... Hmm, they'll have more units coming on here. Stacking limits only apply at the end of movement, I believe, so just to double check. And, uh, end of movement. So the Confederates can bring on reinforcements right after I move these guys out of the way. So we will do that. And then the A, D, D, is it the attacker or the defender? Occupation of hexes uses no movement. Immediately after an attacker wins a combat. Okay, defending units never advance. So that is where we stand at the end of the Confederate turn two. We will be right back um, to record the Union movement and or combat. Okay, welcome back. Um, it's the Union player's second game turn and we'll pick it up with Union movement. Well, Gamble could be of great service pretty much where he's at, but I think I'm going to pull him back a hex. Although the stream only gives a plus one. Eh, I don't know. I think he's pretty good on the hill. Perhaps uh, the Buford leader should uh, fall back. Meh. We'll see what happens. Let's go ahead and move Wadsworth up into the McPherson Woods, as I believe was done historically. One, two, three. Now, see if I can get there, or do I have to use a road? One extra movement factor to enter a road. Woods hex. Unless I'm using a road, there's none. And wood, rough hills, it costs one extra movement point to enter a rough hill. 
uh, F6, uh, what is it? Oh, P1, P2, P3. P3 is not a rough hail. I think it is a hill and it is a wood though. Uh, let's see. Oh yeah, general stack with a unit gives that unit an extra movement point. Um, well, it looks like the round top is wooded. But it doesn't have the um, rough looking terrain. So I guess you could call it a hill and a wood. So to go up the hills plus one, go up the woods plus one, and we have Reynolds who would uh, increase his move point by one. So one, two, three, four, five. As it turns out, Reynolds is not needed to get him up there. All right, I'm gonna pause a minute and then we will bring on the Union reinforcements. Okay, here we go. Um, game turn two, Union movement. We're going to bring on the Union reinforcements now. Um, we have Barlow. So, moving on the road, he can go ten hexes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And everybody else, Robinson. He can come up here into the peach orchard and double day be marching smartly down the road behind him. Um, followed by Wainwright's artillery. And now I've probably moved this all out of the map or out of the camera range. Uh, we'll see if we can't get that. Alright, now I've got that in focus. Alright, and lastly, I don't know if you can see it very well. Maybe a little bit of glare, I'm afraid. Or perhaps a lot of glare. And perhaps I can move the camera around here without making it too. Uh, sorry. Oh, these neophyte cameramen. Alright, that should give you a fairly clear shot. Alright, so it looks like we have Howard's second core uh, along with shirts. So these two will get an extra movement point. One, two, three, four, five, six. Making it to yeah, Cemetery Hill. And the artillery unit, Osborne. Um, it's going to be a half, half, one, two, three, four, five. And that's about as far as he can go. Um, yeah, I can see that this is still going to be a problem. I also have these little mini tripods, that's probably the biggest drawback. It's hard to get an overall view. Alright, let me pause here for a moment and we'll try to get an overall view. Okay, this is positions of the Union and Confederate troops at the end of game turn two. Um, up in the upper right hand corner the Confederates suffered um, a small setback as they attacked Gamble's cavalry. Um, 
Wadsworth has moved up into position. Um, the rest of his uh, corps is slowly making their way down the Emmitsburg Road. Um, Church from Second Corps has uh, put himself up on Cemetery Ridge, and that's pretty much um, it for turn two. So when I come back, we'll be doing turn three. Thanks, and we'll see you later.